<laughs> Good luck. Of the United, United States, States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of contemplative silence for our great country, its citizens, and those serving it around the world. Thank you all very much. Please be seated. Madam Clerk, the roll call. Majority Leader Borgia? Here. Minority Leader Testa? Here. Mr. Boykin? Here. Mr. Burroughs? Here. Mr. Gelfarb? Here. Mr. Harcum? Here. Mr. Jenkins? Here. Mr. Mezzano? Here. Ms. Marcotte? Ms. Parker? Here. Ms. Perez? Here. Ms. Shimsky? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Ms. Spreckman? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Chairman? Present. We have a quorum. Excellent. Call for a motion on consent, uh, consent agenda. Legislator Borgia? Uh, yes. Uh, so moved with no changes. Second. Testa? Okay. Mr. Mazzano? Yes. Okay. Uh, no objections. A consent agenda moved. So, so ordered. Uh, minutes approval at this point. Again, Majority Leader Borgia? Yes, I would like to move the minutes of Monday, June 2nd, 2014 at 7 p.m. and the minutes of the Monday, June 9th, 2014 at 1.30 p.m. meeting. Mr. Testa. Minutes. Would you like to second them? Second. Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Maizano? Yes. Approval. Uh, no objections. Uh, we will, uh, minutes are approved, uh, so ordered. Uh, at this point, uh, if the clerk uh, could please read the rules for public comment session. Each speaker shall be limited to three minutes. Uh, the first speaker is Susan Totten. As Ms. Totten makes her way down the aisle to my left of, and stand behind the black ropes, I'll call the next couple of speakers, Deirdre Curran, Regina Riley, Edmund Riley. I've said everyone just form a line to my left behind the black rope. And the first speaker is Ms. Susan Totten. Good evening to the Board of Legislators, and thank you. After several months, so many questions, discussions, review, process, legal issues, meetings, on and on, I admire all of you. The field house is a no, thank goodness. The neighborhoods are pleased. So what's next now? Playland is a happy time. The parking lot is well used. The children's museum looks quite exciting. And the skating rink has hope. Seems to me that good things can happen. Fix Playland with full summer season as well as some spring and fall, but not all year round. There has been a way to fix, uh, there, we do have to fix the debt with good business. So yes, what is next? I trust you all. What you do is good, and that is what can work. I'm looking forward to what is next. Thank you again. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Ms. Deirdre Curran. I'm back. When I was coming here in the winter in Sorrells and snow pants, I really didn't think I'd still be here in shorts and t-shirts and flip-flops. Um, I was supposed to be really happy two weeks ago uh, that the field zone is gone for now. I think Susan's a little more optimistic than I am. I was also supposed to be happy to hear that sustainable playland no longer has the duties to manage the park, but it raises a lot more questions, um, the announcement from Mr. Astorino. We're paying Mr. Biederman $80,000 for four months of review when we have a master plan on the table 
from Bullock, Smith & Partners that I believe someone told me in my group we spent $250,000 on. Why aren't we just going back to that? We're concerned that Mr. Biederman continuing to be involved and then giving sustainable play land, fundraising duties, and the most ridiculous thing of all, oversight of historic preservation of that park, when they wanted to take out the beautiful grand entrance and put a water park in there and build a Costco-like building in the middle of the parking lot, they're going to be overseeing whether we're preserving the historic integrity of the park is appalling to most of us. And we see it as a way to keep them involved so that they can make a comeback. And we're very concerned about that. And we're not so sure that field zone is dead. We're not clear on why we need more review, another four months of review. We know what the problems are at the park. We've known for a long time. We know what we need to do to fix it. And it's an incredible waste of taxpayer money and Playland's time. I'd like to know if during that review we're going to finally get that long talked about and never done total and complete soup to nuts audit on everything that's going on at the park, including the parking revenue, which never gets credited to the amusement park. How can we do a review and figure out what's wrong with Playland if nobody really knows exactly what the numbers are in and coming and going in and out of that park? Nobody knows. We can't get that information. That ought to be the first thing you do. If you're going to review because there are financial problems, the first thing you should be starting with is a full, complete audit. Incredibly irresponsible if that's not going to be part of this review. Another concern we have is not clear on why, when Sustainable Playland walked, was set, showed the door, I guess, they had picked an operator for the amusement park and an operator for the ice rink. Why are we going to go ahead with the operator they picked for the ice rink, but not the operator they picked for the amusement park? We don't understand that. We're also not sure whether or not it's legal to give American Skating a 10-year contract without you people approving it. That's another question we have. And was that sent out to bid? Did, did we ask anybody else if they want to run the skating rink? I, you know, I guess they've been doing it for a while, but that's all pretty fuzzy. Um, we are not real happy with this. We're relieved that for now the field zone seems to be gone and sustainable playland seems to be gone, but they're not really gone, and that concerns us. And we are urging all of you to look at standard and central, start the review process again, talk to them, and finish the review process and get something in place for 2015. Thank you. Regina Riley. My name is Regina Riley. I'm from the uh, Ninth uh, Legislative District. Ezekiel, a prophet of a Hebrew Bible who comforted the Jews during the Babylonian captivity, told the people that if they did not tell someone breaking God's law that they were doing so, the people themselves would be responsible for that sin as well as for the condemnation of the person who sinned. It is out of love that I say two things, that abortion is an intrinsic evil and that those with same-sex attraction who have sex with a person of the same sex are committing a grave evil and are endangering their immortal soul. I believe, and I would hope that I would die for this belief, that every one of us is loved by God and God wants to have that person in heaven with him. But in order to do so, we have to follow his commands in season and out of season. And right now, what we're doing is we're saying good is evil and evil is good, which is something that you'll find in the New Testament. Also, Paul, who was a, um, a rabbi uh, who became a Christian, said, that any man who lies with another man, any woman who lies with another woman, as if lying with the opposite sex, commits a grave sin. Now, did he did it do that because he was bigoted? Did he do that because he didn't want to see these people in heaven? No, it's because he loved them. And he wants to see every one of them in heaven. As I do you, and I, as I do everybody who is in this, uh, in this room before. I want to see them in heaven. But it's my responsibility to make sure that they and that you know it's not Regina Riley's law. It has nothing to do with that. I'm a sinner just like everybody else. And I'm saying as a sinner to other people who are committing a grave evil that this is a grave evil. And it's an objective truth that people have to understand doesn't 
change from day to day because it's popular, it's unpopular, or somebody makes uh, a, uh, a law, an unjust law, that says it's okay. So what I'm saying to you is, don't be afraid to follow the law as it is. And don't be afraid to tell people in all love, you want them in heaven, and therefore you want them to stop committing sins that will send them to condemnation. All right, we all have free will, and it's all about not how we, we might have a same-sex attraction. We can't help how we, how we feel about people, but it is what we do with it. It's all about free will. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ed Riley. Ed Riley, I'm from Croton. Um, for the 42nd time, I challenge the Democratic majority, the party of abortion and the party of slavery, to investigate what Planned Parenthood has done in the abortion mills in Westchester County, especially since the state of New York has not done their duty in inspecting these facilities. And these facilities have a record, along with other abortion mills in this state, of the most terrible atrocities that can be imagined by mankind. I challenge you, the Democrats, to do something about that. You're in charge of this mess. <clears throat> That's the 42nd time I've asked the Democrat Party in this county to investigate what Planned Parenthood has done, especially to decimating minority populations in this county, Spanish and black. <clears throat> about this evening's agenda, I've always opposed these <clears throat> little celebrations, ethnic celebrations, because you leave out the Swiss and the people from Borneo and Indonesia. You can't possibly celebrate every freaking group under the sun. But especially when you celebrate something that is out of this world, gay marriage. The people sitting in this room, on the Democratic side, some of them, said 17 years ago that they opposed gay marriage. They were for domestic partnerships, but they opposed gay marriage. And by the way, Ma gay marriage will always be known as gay marriage. It will never be known as marriage. It will always be gay marriage. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Gay marriage can be a woman and a woman, or a man and a man. That's three types of marriages. And the federal court in Utah say there may be two more types. It all started with the decimation of marriage in the United States starting in the 60s, to the point where 20% of ch ch black children were born to unmarried parents in the early 60s, to where 70% are born to unmarried parents now, to where 25% of Hispanic children were born to unmarried parents, to where 40 to 45% are, are born to unmarried parents now, to, to where 9 out of 10 whites were born to married parents, to a point where now 35%, 30, 35% of whites are born to unmarried parents. With that decim decimation of marriage becomes the devaluation of marriage so that you can ma marry anybody. And it's just a matter of time before the other two categories get married. So now there's man and a woman, woman and a woman, man and a man, and there's two more types to come, or more. So it's just part of this degradation of the United States, which we're all experiencing, and this is a wholesale part of it. Now, unfortunately, people think because politicians can speak well, and some of them graduated from law school, they may have half a brain concerning moral issues. I've found quite to the contrary, although I have to admit this to you legislators, that you're better than the average freaking citizen in the United States, and that the Democrats do represent 50% of the people in the United States. 50% of the people would have supported slavery. They, would, they do support big city political corruption, thought, sir. and they do and then you do support moral degradation. The Democratic Party does represent that group. And the unfortunate part is, once a nation ceases to be good, it will cease to be great, and we are on our way at a high rate of speed. Excellent, thank you, Mr. Riley. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have no more speaker cards. Excellent, we'll close the public comment portion of this meeting. Uh, would the clerk please uh, read the item of unfinished business? 
please note this item was held over from the June 2nd, 2014 regular board meeting and appears here as an item of unfinished business for action sure. submitted by the committees on infrastructure, budget and appropriations and economic development and capital projects. Uh, item number 7102, a bond act authorizing the issuance of $800,000 in bonds of the county to finance capital project RGIP5, general infrastructure <laughs> roofing systems. Ms. Markup. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is an item for $800,000, which is going to fund the design, construction, the repair of roofs at Glen Island, uh, Lenar Preserve, Mountain Lakes, Muscoo Farms, Tibbet Book Park, Wampus Park, uh, and Wilson Woods. Uh, these roofs each are uh, in excess of 30 years old. The 800000 represents two years of allocations, the 2013 and 2014. The simpler roofs will be uh, uh, handled by in-house staff. The more complicated roofs will be handled by outside staff. The design is anticipated, anticipated to take six months and construction approximately 12 months. Uh, the, the new life of the roof is targeted to be 25 to 30 years. And with that, we pass it on to infrastructure. The Shimsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This item was held over because there were questions about the roof at Crumpton Point Park. Um, park staff came into our committees and testified that the roof had been had actually been repaired in-house with available resources and for that reason um, we're moving it forward tonight thank you excellent legislators questions comments seeing none we'll go to a long roll call please majority leader Borgia yes minority leader Testa yes Mr. Boykin? Yes. Mr. Burroughs? Yes. Mr. Gelfarb? Aye. Mr. Harcum? Mr. Harcum? Yes. Mr. Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Mezzano? Yes. Ms. Margot? Aye. Ms. Parker? Yes. Ms. Perez? Yes. Ms. Shimsky? Aye. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Breckman? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Chairman. Aye. The item passes 17-0. Uh, from standing committees, item number 6865, submitted by the committees on infrastructure, budget and appropriations, economic development and capital projects, is an amended bond act authorizing the issuance of $1,800,000 in bonds of the county to finance capital project SBV20, Force Main, Re Force Main Rehab Bronx Valley Sewer District. Ms. Marco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So moved for the Budget and Appropriations Committee. I'll turn it over to uh, Economic Development. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is a $1.8 million bond item, which includes 600,000 previously, previously authorized bonds. It's going to fund the construction and installation of a new uh, eight inch force main uh, from the sprain lift pumping station. Uh, it, as, as opposed to removing the old force main, it will be a uh, a, 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 an existing the force main, the existing force main will be left in place, and this will be an additional force main. Um, the existing force main now currently has is currently has an asbestos cement uh, um, uh, component to it. Uh, it, has, it, it has it has had several breaks over the years, and the timing uh, on completing this project will be contingent upon receiving easements from Con Edison. With that, we move this item on to infrastructure. Shimsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at this point, this is one of the um, more structurally challenged force mains in our county's wastewater treatment system. Um, it's definitely in need of repair. We've seen situations with, for example, the Terrytown force main where we've had major incidents occur on a regular basis. We certainly don't want that to happen here. And for that reason, infrastructure determined that this work is operationally essential. Thank you. Excellent. Legislators, comments, question? Seeing none, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. The items approved, 17-0. Uh, Item number 6948, submitted by the Committees on Infrastructure, Budget and Appropriations, and Economic Development and Capital Projects, an amended bond act authorizing the issuance of $8,500,000 in bonds, which includes $6 million in previously authorized bonds to finance capital project SNR 20, Mamaronek Nourisho Twin Sludge Force Main. Ms. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So moved for budget. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this capital bund bund amendment will deal with uh, the eight-inch sludge force mains that carry the sludge from the Mamaroneck wastewater treatment plant for approximately three miles. Um, these were installed in 1964, and they have reached the end of their uh, their estimated life. There has been a tremendous amount of wear and tear on these uh, over the years, and uh, what's going to happen is that they're going to uh, uh, have one force main in place and one backup. Uh, there's no expected disruption to this process and currently designed for this project is at 90%. The need for the capital bu budget amendment is a function of the bids coming in uh, at over the estimated initial cost. And with that, we will move this on to infrastructure. Ms. Shipsky. Okay. Um, this, like many parts of our wastewater treatment infrastructure, uh, we've recognized the need for its repair for some time. And um, we see this year a whole slew of, I hope I wasn't doing any inadvertent puns there, of wastewater treatment projects are coming before us. Um, it's a good thing that we're getting to them. Many of these have been on the drawing board since as early as 2004 and 2006. Uh, we really need this work done. We, the public health requires it and the um, Further economic development and health of our county requires it as well. So infrastructure was happy to vote this out. Excellent. Legislators, comments, questions, thoughts? Mr. Jenkins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On, on these particular items, and, and thank you for the committee's review on it, and, and specifically Legislator Shimsky, Chairwoman of Infrastructure, just pointing out that several of these particular projects have been on the, the docket for a very long time, and it's good that they're coming up. Um, I just wanted to um, state on our record here that these are the first time these are coming up from a construction perspective. So from 2004, um, on this particular bond act that was appropriated for the construction of the force main rehab now to 2013. So certainly this is work that ne is necessary to be done, um, but again, trying to make sure to keep the flow, you know, for, <laughs> see, there you go, to keep the flow. I'll be here all week. Keep the flow going on all the force means that these are issues that, that need to continue to come up in the, the committees um, to keep the projects moving along so that we don't have failures like we had in Tarrytown. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Excellent. Colleagues, other questions, thoughts? Otherwise, uh, we'll take the previous long roll call without objection, so ordered. The items approved 17 0. Item number oh, 7092, uh, submitted by the Committees on Public Safety and Budget and Appropriations, is an act authorizing the county to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with the Village of Tuckahoe, pursuant to which the Department of Public Safety will provide village police with communications and dispatch services during the midnight shift. Ms. Marco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm happy to move this uh, for the Budget and Appropriations Committee as well as for my district. Uh, this act will be a, a five-year uh, IMA, if you will, commencing beginning December 3rd, 2013. Uh, we did a very short trial run with the Tuckahoe Police Department and Westchester County Police, and it worked very well. And I might add, this is an excellent example of shared services where the Westchester County Police will be handling any of the 911 and any other emergency related calls that come from the general public during the midnight shift. So, so moved for budget, and I'll turn this over to my colleague in public safety. Mr. Gilbert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Not only is this an excellent example of shared services, which will inure to the benefit of our taxpayers, but it will, in fact, en enhance public safety in the Tuckahoe area, as this will allow the freeing up of one of the Tuckahoe police officers to go out on patrol and to be more responsive to, uh, to public safety and emergencies and not to have to be concerned with dispatch services. Uh, now, as, as uh, Mar Legislator Marcotte has explained, uh, the uh, county will take over dispatch services over the uh, midnight shift, and this will be a real, a real enhancement to uh, the police work done in the village of Tuckahoe, as now, uh, once again, the, uh, the police in Tuckahoe will be able to devote extra energy and extra resources to a patrol and not have to uh, worry about dispatch. So Public Safety Committee uh, heard this and, and was very impressed by this, uh, by this IMA, and it, we so will be. Excellent. Colleagues, Mr. the Borgia. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am in favor of this um, of this IMA, and I uh, hope that it is the case, as was explained to us in the committees where we discussed this, that other municipalities would also be allowed to create similar um, 
uh, arrangements with the Westchester County Police if it works for both the municipality and the county because I do believe that um, this is the wave of the future and that it shouldn't uh, be limited to only a few municipalities here in Westchester County, but that this is an excellent way for local municipalities to save a significant amount of taxpayer dollars. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On, on this particular item, the only the, I am absolutely in support of this particular item. It, again, is a, a great echo in, um, as far as um, Chairman Gelfar would just mentioned, um, and shortly Chairwoman Marcotte as well. Um, the, the only issue that I stand for this particular item is to echo uh, what Majority Leader Borgia just was mentioning, that we have several of, of these items, and this particular item, as it's retroactive to December, um, I don't recall it being in front of the, the board at that particular time, going back to December on this particular item, but we certainly have at least two different um, IMAs and um, consolidation potentials that have been being worked along for a very, very, very long time with the board. And it'd be nice to, to mention again that one's in Mount Pleasant um, in a Republican district and the other's in Mount Kisco in a Democratic district. And those are another opportunity to um, to have the the savings that would be able to be realized, and as it is in Tuckahoe. So it is an outstanding agreement in this particular case. But you know the board has been very um, strong in articulating that every community should have this particular opportunity. And I hope we're able to get the ones done in Mount Kisco and in Mount Pleasant, as we did with uh, when then Supervisor Borgia's opportunity um, up in the town of Austin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Excellent. Other colleagues? At this point, uh, seeing no other discussion, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. The items approved, 17-0. Item number 7093, submitted by the Committees on Public Safety and Budget and Appropriations, an act authorizing the county to lease a light armored personnel carrier to Putnam County for use by Putnam's special response team. Excellent. Ms. Markham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So moved for budget, and I will turn this over to Legislator Gelfar for public Gelfar. safety. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is another win-win for the taxpayers of uh, Westchester. As, uh, as we all know, we cooperate uh, heavily and extensively with, the, with our colleagues in the County of Putnam with respect to emergency response measures. Uh, we now have this, uh, an extra uh, armored personnel type vehicle, a carrier type vehicle. We have received a more modern one ourselves. Thus, we really, the uh, belief is that we only need one uh, on, on a regular basis. Uh, seeing that we already have that now we have a surplus vehicle it will be uh, given to Putnam for its use we will not be, they will be paying for insurance maintenance and upkeep and so forth so there really will be no cost to us uh, the vehicle will however if necessary be brought back here if there were a need to to have two vehicles respond to a serious emergency unfortunately in the world in which we live there is a need to have uh, uh, vehicles that can respond to extremely serious incidents and we are pleased to uh, be able to uh, sort of, so to speak, give uh, this lend lease type measure to our colleagues in Putnam. So on behalf of public safety, so. Mr. Gelfar, congratulations on that historical reference. As a legislator who lives closest to Putnam County, I will take this as a non-bellicose uh, move on the part of Putnam County, but one that from public safety standpoint is potentially needed. And uh, any colleagues at this point have any comments, questions, thoughts, Mr. Jenkins? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just on this particular item, again, it's so certainly something to do um, with sharing services. However, in this particular item, the only concern I do, and, I'm, and I, ra raise as a, a, I rise as a Yonkers legislator, specifically on a surplus vehicle that might be being used for police pur um, purposes, um, Yonkers was promised a surplus vehicle several years ago, and I do have that um, the communication that went between the administration as well as uh, the uh, the administration as well as the city of Yonkers on this particular item on a surplus vehicle. If this vehicle was indeed surplus, then it should have either followed that similar process that that Mr. Harkum was the, the lead legislator in getting um, the surplus vehicle. Um, process in place where people bid on these particular items, but more importantly, um, we're leasing this particular vehicle for a dollar to Putnam for this particular um, um, investment that the county has made. So again, it's not that we should not be sharing with our neighbors specifically on items when we can work together, 
but if we're going to do something, I would expect that we would do it for our own Westchester residents first. And again, as a Yonkers legislator to stand up to say that this particular item, you know, smacks in the face of a um, similar arrangement that then Commissioner John Shu promised to the city of Yonkers. Thank you. So noted. Colleagues, any other questions, thoughts? At this point, uh, we'll take the uh, previous long roll call unless uh, asked for otherwise. Previous long roll call, so ordered. The items approved 17-0. Item number 7176, submitted by the Committees on Infrastructure, Budget and Appropriations, and Economic Development and Capital Projects, is an act amending the 2014 County Capital Budget Appropriation for Capital Project A054A, Rehab of Various Taxiways. Ms. Markup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this CBA will decrease the county's share of the project by $296,695 and increase the non-county share by the same in anticipated, anticipa, anticipation of New York State Department of Transportation funding. And I will turn this over to uh, economic development. So moved for budget. As discussed and approved in economic development, we move to infrastructure. Ms. Chimsky. Yes, this is one of our usual capital budget amendments as concerns the airport. Uh, normally we bond for 10% of the total cost of a project, and then given the usual formulas, the state government usually provides half or five, half of that or 5% of the total project. We then reduce the cost of the bond, the unused proceeds then go to the, um, to the um, airport fund. Another issue that's been coming up a lot recently with the airport are local concerns about stormwater management issue, issues. We discussed this in committee, and we understand that uh, there is a new stormwater remediation project currently being done, which is under review by the FAA even as we speak. And hopefully by the end of this year, we'll get to take a look at that, and that will give the neighboring communities an opportunity to discuss um, their issues with the stormwater management at the airport. Um, so given the routine nature of this, and since we all like to get $296,000 from time to time, um, infrastructure was happy it voted out. <laughs> Excellent. Legislators, any comments, questions, thoughts on this? Otherwise, uh, that objection will take the previous long roll call. So ordered. The items approved, 17-0. Item number 7177, submitted by the Committees on Infrastructure, Budget and Appropriations, and Economic Development and Capital Projects, is an act amending the 2014 Cap County Capital Budget Appropriations for Capital Project A002A, Airport Approach Protection. Ms. Markoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a similar situation, if you will. Happy to move this for budget. The CBA will decrease the local share by over $11,000 and increase the non-county share by the same. And I'll turn this over to economic development. Thank you. This specific project relates to the removal of the uh, flagpole uh, that obstructs the approach on runway 34. Uh, this is being done solely with airport funds. And with that, we move this on to infrastructure. Ms. Shimsky. Okay, thank you very much. Um, just so you know, the only re the reason we're getting only 11,000 here is because this is the removal of a pole. The last one was the um, repairs to an entire runway. Um, I understand that this is the standard 95-5-5 situation, again, as Legislator Marcotte discussed, and the work has been complete, um, so we're happy to take the money and run, um, and we were happy to vote it out of infrastructure. Excellent. Colleagues, questions, thoughts, discussion? Otherwise, uh, without objection, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. The items approved, 17-0. Item number uh, 7178, submit, submitted by the Committees on Infrastructure, Public Safety, Budget and Appropriations, and Economic Development and Capital Projects, is a bond act authorizing the issuance of $400,000 in bonds of the county to finance capital project BPS 15, Public Safety Headquarters Renovations. Ms. Markup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, some much needed renovations, and I'm happy to move this for budget, and I'll turn it over to my colleague, Michael Smith. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this relates to the uh, 
Public Safety uh, Headquarters and located in Hawthorne. The building itself is 30 years old and it is uh, filled with 30 year old building type issues. Um, this is the funded design component of the project. Uh, what, what is expected to be reworked in this project is not limited to new lighting, electrical wiring, bathroom refurbishment, HVAC, installation of an elevator, and new flooring where, where necessary. Um, as I said, 30 years, it's, they feel that they need a rework on this, uh, on this building, uh, much needed. So with that, we move it through into infrastructure. Excellent. Shimsky. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, much like many of these wastewater treatment projects we've been dealing with, um, this project was originally put on the drawing board in 2008. Uh, we've been assured by the relevant commissioners that, that the um, estimated cost um, should, should work, that there should not be any cost escalators um, that are unanticipated at this point. Uh, but again, we will have to confirm that when they come back for the uh, construction bond. At the same time, um, we did ask that when they do come back for the construction bond, we get more specific figures on energy usage, energy conservation, and savings than um, we've been getting for a while. And of course, that's very important information for the taxpayers to have because if we can reduce energy consumption, that will help us pay back the cost of the bonds and the repairs. So on that basis, infrastructure was willing to move it out, and we'll see what comes back in the um, construction phase. Excellent. Mr. Galford, Chair of Public Safety. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that was quite a thorough uh, recitation by, uh, by my colleagues. I rise only to say that this uh, project will, when it comes to enhance the uh, operational effectiveness of the building, it's not just a matter of fixing lights, it's not just wiring, it's not just HVAC. Uh, I'm pleased to note that this should make the building a lot more ADA compliant. The installation of the elevator will really help. It will help both uh, visitors as well as uh, current staff and, and uh, public safety personnel who use the building. Uh, in addition to simply upgrading the building uh, and its mechanical systems and so forth, it will considerably enhance the operational uh, effectiveness of, uh, of a building, which is uh, very key to our public safety uh, departments. So on behalf of public safety, so moved. Excellent. Those watching at home, uh, we are all glistening this evening and saving taxpayers' dollars as we speak. Um, the air conditioning must be off, so our utility bill will be a little bit lower this coming month. And uh, talk about energy savings. Um, any items, uh, any discussion on this item that's before us this evening? Seeing none, we'll take uh, the previous long roll call without objection. So ordered. The items approved, 17-0. Item number 7179, submitted by the Committees on Infrastructure, Environment and Energy, and Budget and Appropriations, is a resolution setting a public hearing on the proposed modification to the Peekskill Sanitary Sewer District by the addition of one parcel of property located in the town of Yorktown, 370606 Meadow Lane. Ms. Marco, to set the public hearing. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let the record show the public hearing is set for July 14th at 7.30 p.m. Rangers are done, right? So there's no more. Okay. All righty. And uh, Committee on in Infrastructure. Ms. Shimsky, concur? I concur, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Parker for Energy and Environment. Excellent. Uh, any colleagues discussion? Otherwise, uh, without objection. The items approved, 17-0. Item number 7182, submitted by the Committees on Community Services and Budget and Appropriations, is an act authorizing the county to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with Rockland County in order to provide mandated preventative respite care and services to eligible children at risk of foster care placement in their families for the term March 1st, 2014 through February 28, 2017. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this was discussed in a joint meeting with Budget and Appropriations and Community Services. Uh, I'll move it for budget, and I'll turn it over to Chairwoman Alfreda Williams, where she can tell you about the, the act before this board. Thank you. Ms. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The county provides for children and families residing in Westchester County these kinds of services to children who are at risk for foster care placement along, uh, and the contract is with Children's Villages for the operation of a runaway and youth shelter located at 35 Hammond House, 
Road on the county's Valhalla campus. The county incurs a fixed cost of $393,173 per year for the rest of shelter, regardless of the utilization of the facility in order to guarantee capacity. The County of Rockland closed its respite center on March 1st, 2013, and at Rockland's request, since that time, the county has provided respite services to its eligible youth on a space available basis. The respite shelter has the capacity to provide such services to Rockland County on most days since full capacity has never been reached. If and when the respite shelter does reach full capacity, Rockland County would have to find alternate placement. This IMA with Rockland County for the provision of the mandated preventative respite uh, starts as March 1, 2014 to run through February 28, 2017 for the consideration payable to the county at the rate of $200 per diem. It is anticipated that Westchester County could offset as much as $56,000 per year for a total sum of $168,000 of the county's cost with Children's Village over a three-year term of the IMA. So, so moved, Mr. Chair. Excellent. Colleagues, questions, discussions? Otherwise, uh, without objection, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. The items approved, 17-0. Item number 6800, submitted by the Committees on Law and Budget and Appropriations, is an act authorizing the county attorney to settle the lawsuit of Christopher D. D. Rentis versus the county and New York Correct Care Solutions Medical Services, PC. Ms. Barkow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move this for budget and turn it over to uh, Chairman Lyndon Williams for the Law Committee. Mr. Williams, sir. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. This uh, settlement involves uh, a lawsuit that was filed by, by Plaintiff Durientes in federal district court alleging uh, civil rights and constitutional rights violations uh, caused by uh, an attack by another inmate at the Westchester County Jail. Uh, in addition to the, uh, to the allegations against the county, there are allegations of um, untimely medical treatment against correctional care. The uh, contractor, which the co county is in contract with for medical services to inmates. The, um, my understanding of the, the action is that the claims against the, the co-defendant, who is uh, correct care, were dropped by the plaintiff, and that correct care did um, provide a defense as required under the indemnification agreement with the county. Uh, this settlement would be for an amount not not to exceed $25,000, and it would dispose of all of the claims, including the plaintiff's state claims that were appended to the federal uh, lawsuit for um, negligent um, failure to protect. So moved. Excellent. Colleagues, any uh, questions, thoughts, comments? Otherwise, uh, seeing none, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. The items approved, 17-0. Item number 6923, submitted by the Committees on Law and Budget and Appropriations, is an act authorizing the county attorney to compromise the claim of Westchester County against the Ford Motor, Com Motor Company for the loss of a 2011 Ford Crown Victoria police cruiser. So moved for budget, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Williams. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also, this action, this legislation relate to a property damage claim. Um, on April 11, 2013, a sergeant from the Westchester County Department of Public Safety while driving on the Hutchinson River Parkway discovered that he had smelled burning in the car and actually his vehicle was on fire. Uh, the vehicle was purchased from Ford. The claim was made for the amount of $29,000. $390. At the time of the accident, or the vehicle was had 21,000 miles on it. It was about a few years, two years old. And so the county is proposing to settle this property for damage claim for $18,175. So moved. Excellent. Colleagues, questions, thoughts, discussion? Otherwise, without objection, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. 
The items approved, 17-0. Item number 7057, submitted by the Committees on Law and Budget and Appropriations, is an act authorizing the county attorney to compromise the claims against activists made on behalf of Westchester County to be reimbursed for overpayments in connection with Medicaid prescription drugs provided to residents of Westchester County. Ms. Walker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So moved for budget. Mr. Williams. Yes, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, this, this act, this settlement relates to a action that was initiated by the county attorney uh, pursuant to Act 65, 2003, that brought legal proceedings against pharmaceutical companies, manufacturers, and wholesalers and retailers who uh, allegedly overcharged the county for um, prescription drugs. And this is a part of that settlement. Under the settlement, the county will be receiving an amount of $68,811.70 for a second installment. Uh, the first installment of this settlement was for the amount of 139000 was adopted back in 2012. I got that wrong. No, the net, I'm sorry. Let me, let me recap. The net settlement amount, which actually is after the attorney's fees, $22,115.50. Two prior settlements had been approved by this board. One was for $139,411.65 in Act 212-143, and the second settlement installment was adopted by the board in 2012. Act 201369 for $68,811.70. So moved. Excellent. Colleagues, questions, thoughts? Uh, otherwise, uh, without objection, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. The items approved, 17-0. Item number 6922, submitted by the Committee on Community Services, is an act to designate the Westchester County Historic Over. Over, Mr. Harcum? Okay, over uh, Legislator Harcum. Uh, item number 6944, submitted by the Committees on Infrastructure and Environment and Energy, is an act authorizing the approval of the stormwater reconnaissance plan for the sawmill in Pocantico Rivers, dated December 2012, prepared by the County Commissioner of Planning and Compliance with the Article 3A County Stormwater Management Law. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. As we all know, this county has been seeing an uptick in flooding problems. Um, I personally noticed when my basement first started flooding the uh, nor'easter of April 16th and 17th, 2007. Since that time, we've been experiencing more and more heavy downpours in the range of several inches. We've had more flooding issues in different parts of the county. Um, the Hurricane Sandy tidal surge affected the Hudson River as well as Long Island Sound. That was unprecedented in the memory of the uh, rather experienced engineering staff in the city of Yonkers. There are many contributing factors to this problem. Climate change, development taking up the soil, vegetation, and open space that traditionally soaked up much of our stormwater, and the failure to maintain our riverbeds, culverts, and other improvements that channeled stormwater. Many solutions are going to be needed to solve all these problems, but we are now beginning the process of putting one of those pieces in place. Pursuant to the 2011 stormwater management legislation, which was shepherded in no small part uh, due to the efforts of former legislator John Nona and my predecessor on the board, uh, now Assemblyman Thomas Abenanti, the county set up an opportunity to help local governments fund stormwater management projects that can alleviate flooding problems in different parts of our county. Um, if those of you are interested to see what a small to medium sized project can do, um, number item number 17 on page 11 of this meeting's agenda um, refers to an article from the Scarsdale Inquirer 
that talks about how the addition of um, detention basins in an area essentially saved a neighborhood from flooding problems during one of our more recent um, heavy storms. Um, the first major step, as I said, oh, the first major step to getting this money to our local communities is the approval of stormwater management reconnaissance plans. The one we are voting on tonight, which is for the, Bron for the Sawmill River and the Pacantico River combined, is the first one before this board. Um, the way these plans work is data was collected from our, our municipalities, and from that data, our planning department compiled a list of flood-prone areas. Um, flood-prone areas that are on that list are potentially eligible for county assistance in building improvements designed to help deal with stormwater. There are limitations at this point. First of all, some of our problems just won't uh, be solvable with the resources we have to put toward them, but we will be able to do a lot of good for a lot of communities. Also, there is critical infrastructure that we don't have in place at this point. For example, we are lacking a countywide system of stream and storm gauges. Um, that means that certain projects are going to be very hard to gauge in terms of effectiveness and potential to ricochet water into other people's neighborhoods. But there are certainly projects the planning department discussed in our infrastructure and e, &E committee meetings how um, projects that are designed to build, to hold water back as was described by the experts, which include detention basins, rain gardens, copses of trees and the like will be able to help areas without causing any undue effects to neighboring areas. So there are plenty of this type of project and plenty of stormwater, um, plenty of flood prone areas that need the assistance. So as I said, this is the first step. We have four uh, reconnaissance plans Brought, sent down to us by the administration. This is the first one we'll be approving at this meeting. Uh, the Bronx River um, reconnaissance plan will almost certainly be voted on at our July meeting, and hopefully we will be able to get all of the, the four that have been completed through committees by the end of the summer. Um, every year we are going to make sure there's a process set up, much like the Ag Districts, which you're familiar with, Mr. Chairman where uh, the planning department will solicit um, amendments to the list from our various communities. Uh, there are already communities who are seeking to amend this and the Bronx River plans. Um, as we go on, hopefully we'll be able to have a regularized process that will create opportunities for communities to help their neighborhoods, help areas in their downtowns around their train stations that will end up helping us all um, I've been proud to be part of this process for the last three plus years. I'm glad to have our co-chairperson um, from Environment and Energy, uh, Legislator Parker, working on this now as well. I'm sure she'll have a lot more to say when we get to uh, the Long Island Sound um, later on in the summer. But at this point, this is action that um, can be very helpful to our communities and Many legislators and local governments worked hard on this, and I am proud to move it tonight. Excellent. Thank you. Ms. Parker. Well, I don't think I could add anything to what <laughs> Legislator Shimsky has said. She's done a fabulous job of laying out the importance of this project, and absolutely, I'm happy to, uh, to move this forward as well. Thank you. Great, great uh, work to the chairs and all the legislators on this very important issue. Sure. Uh, any uh, comments, questions, thoughts? Uh, Mr. Jenkins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On this particular item, certainly um, the uh, congratulations should go as um, to both Legislator Parker as the Chair of Environment and Energy, but more specifically to Legislator Shimsky, who's personally taking this on as another um, challenge is the bridge woman as all the other things that are going on. Um, I just wanted to know two, two other items on this particular thing. First is that there is legislation that we, are, that we have proposed to make some modifications in the stormwater um, law, specifically as it relates to the contributions from those local communities, because what um, has been found out over the years, 
and I know that uh, Ms. Shimsey is a co-sponsor of this particular piece of legislation with others, um, that, that the local municipalities are unable to come up with their upfront money to deal with this specific issue. Um, the original legislation as proposed by um, then legislator Abenanti was that the county would lead off with money and then the local community would be able to deal with some of the other um, issues as well. Um, the annual report um, is, is a support of that. The annual report that is due part of, pursuant to the legislation um, is a portion of that. So in 2012 was the first two, um, the two, the first two storm water basins, and then last year in 2013 we received the Bronx River one. Um, the last particular point on this particular matter, Mr. Chairman, and, and honorable members on this particular um, subject, is that the legislature has taken a tremendous lead in this particular item, and quite frankly, the legislature has never is not built to have the staff to support this particular item, um, whether it's the swab or the brab or which have the Bronx River, the, um, the whatever those particular items are, the legislature is not and was not in the legislation as it was adopted um, envisioned to lead that effort. The Department of, of the Commissioner of Planning and Department of Planning was supposed to lead that effort even with great legislators like Legislator Shipsky and Burroughs and, and, um, and Spreckman on their specific items in their legislative areas as far as flooding is concerned and certainly on the Sound Shore as well with legislators Mezano and Parker and others on, on the Sound Shore. But um, I would also echo while I'm in support of this legislation, I'm not in support of the legislators and the, legislate, the, the Board of Legislators having that huge um, lift in this particular area, that the administration has to pick up its game on this particular item because the legislature just does not have the staff or the capacity to really do it um, and to follow it through. And I'm hopeful our colleagues will be able to take a look at that proposed legislation should it, when it comes in front of the members as far as changing the mix because it affects all of our communities and I think it's necessary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. And uh, Ms. Shimsky, had a follow-up comment, sir? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to um, add to Legislator Jenkins's point that we have had some preliminary discussions about what to do about the municipal match it is a pretty controversial issue at this point with some of the legislators. Um, I think that what's going to happen is as we move forward and we approve all of these plans and communities then start to look at the potential of, under, of undertaking some of these projects, I think to a certain extent experience will probably end up being the best guide on this and we'll get a sense as communities come to us, their legislators, and talk to us about what they can do and what they can't do and what they need in order to move forward. I think our, it will help make our path a little more clear. Uh, but as I said, we will continue those conversations after we get the um, reconnaissance plans approved. Excellent. Any other colleagues, thoughts, uh, Ms. Freckman? saw the river, you know, Parkway. I was happy the planning people were there and people from the small communities that are affected that gave their opinions, their advice, you know. Very, very interesting and I am very happy to try to work with you and I think we will get things accomplished. I don't know if we get everything, but it's better than what we will have and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Legislator. Excellent. Any other comments, uh, thoughts, legislators at this time? Okay, good. Um, uh, we will uh, take the previous long roll call without objection. So ordered. <clears throat> the items approved, 17-0. Item number 6955, submitted by the Committee on Appointments, is a resolution appointing Elio Giuliani as a union representative member of the Westchester County Deferred Compensation Board for the term to expire December 31st, 2017. Mr. Boykin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a resolution appointing Elio Giuliani as a union representative member of the Westchester County Deferred Compensation Board 
for the term to expire December 31, 2017. The Appointments Committee interviewed um, Mr. Giuliani, found him to be in good standing, and we look forward to his service on the Deferred Compensation Board. And one of the things that the Deferred Compensation Board does is that they are now hiring managers to evaluate the Deferred Compensation Plans. So I think that is very, very important. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions, thoughts, uh, comments from legislators at this time? Otherwise, uh, we'll take the previous long roll call. So ordered. The items approved, 17-0. Item number 7109, submitted Over. by. Over. Over Legislator Jenkins. Ten. <clears throat> Item number 6921, submitted by the Committees on Infrastructure, Budget and Appropriations, and Economic Development and Capital Projects, is a bond act authorizing the issuance of $325,000 in bonds of the county to finance capital project BIT33 radio site infrastructure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm happy to move this uh, for budget. There was much conversation about this, and I will turn it over to uh, Economic Development. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Department of IT handles the uh, com emergency communication systems for the county. Uh, there are 12 systems that rely upon their work. This is a project for $325,000 to, you know, for rehabilitation replacement of the infrastructure as required. Um, it is scheduled uh, to take approximately six months, and the uh, the analysis is, is ongoing. Construction will begin and take approximately 12 months beyond that. With that, we move it on to infrastructure. Ms. Shimsky. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is going to be a multi-year undertaking. Um, we got a very detailed report today from the, um, chief, the chief information officer of the county on what exactly is going to be done with this tranche of money and what parts of the system and what locations are going to be worked on in year one. Um, hopefully we will be able to get this done in, in the next several years and no one can gainsay the importance of making sure we keep up to date on our emergency communications. So infrastructure is happy to sign this out. Excellent. Colleagues, uh, comments, thoughts? Otherwise, uh, without objection, we'll take the previous long roll call. So we'll do. The items approved, 17-0. Item number seven one. Me, item number seven one nine six, submitted by the committee on Legis committees on legislation, committee on legislation and charter commission review task force, is a resolution to set a public hearing on a proposed local law adding a new section one nine four dot three one one to the laws of Westchester County, establishing a Westchester County Charter Revision Commission. Ms. Press. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I'd like to set this public hearing for July 14 at 7.30 p.m. Excellent. And uh, Mr. Burris? Essentially so moved. I just want to make uh, one comment that the Charter Revision Committee has been meeting regularly with uh, various other committees. Uh, former legislator Richard Wincy has been part of that. We've been working hard with all of the committees. I'm looking forward to July 14th. We've had people from our legislative staff that have been regularly working with the committee, and I'm hoping that we're going to be accomplishing some real good legislation, good changes within the next month. Excellent. Uh, without objection and so ordered, uh, take the previous long roll call. The items approved, 17-0. Uh, motions, resolutions, and calls of the district. Yes, Mr. Williams. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'd like to add the name of Ian Joseph to the resolutions. Um, Mr. Joseph was a member of the Westchester Rent Guidelines Board um, who um, volunteered and served on that board for the County of Westchester uh, for approximately three years. His untimely passing um, it was such that I, I was over there earlier today before this meeting to present his wife with a resolution from the Board of Legislators. And Mr. Joseph had two young children, one nine and one three year old. Mm -hmm. And I conveyed to his wife that we, our condolences and that 
we would adjourn our meeting in his honor tonight. So I just would like to um, to put his name on the uh, resolution agenda. Of course, sure, Ms. Shimsky. All, all legislators. Also, I'd like to be added to the uh, list of legislators on Ruby D's. Well, I, I, or should that be? We'll make that more legislators. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. We have uh, Mr. Gelfarb. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to be added to uh, this for the uh, resolution for Joseph Angelillo. Mr. Angelillo is uh, was uh, was a uh, distinguished resident of my district. He lived, uh, lived in Harrison. Uh, he is the father of former Appellate Division Justice. Angelillo, who is now the uh, commissioner of the Solid Waste Commission. Uh, Mr. Angelillo Sr. had five children. He was a distinguished attorney, a distinguished businessman, a real community leader, and his, uh, his loss was greatly felt throughout the county, and in particular in, uh, in his native West Harrison neighborhood. Mr. Gelfarb, I'd like to join you on that uh, memorial resolution. Certainly, Mr. Please. Chairman. Of course, and we have a, oh, on that, John, Mr. Tesco? Wants to be added as well. I'd like Perhaps to join. Yeah. yeah. All that, too. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Williams, please. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to be added uh, to the resolution on Ruby White. She's a uh, resident of Rock Prairie and a long term civil activist. Absolutely. Sure. Mr. Mazzano? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to rise for a second and say some nice words about the great Ruby D one of the fam most famous New Rochellians of all time. Um, and I'll just say this, I got to meet Ruby D all the time around New Rochelle, different events, her and her husband Ozzy did uh, 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 hit events all over the city. Um, and they were just total community people, totally involved in the community. And here's what was really cool about her, right? Ruby D, would watch her in the movies, you know, and she's such a great actress. And sometimes you read about in the papers, right? These famous people aren't so nice. When you met Ruby, uh, Personally, she was just like the lady in the movies. So she was so smart, and she was so dynamic, and she was so cool. I mean, she would talk to anybody. Ruby D would talk to anybody that came up to her. She'd sign any autograph. She would spend time talking to young people. She was just like the nicest person, um, despite the fact she was a superstar as an actress. She was an incredibly nice lady, and I really, I got to, as a matter of fact, I even got to meet her one time when I was going door to door. She answered the door. I don't think she voted for me. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I will tell you the funny story. I did, she actually told me she wasn't going to vote for me, but she did say, no, this is a great story. It's a great story. She said, don't worry. You got my husband. You'll break even. <laughs> That's how cool she was. She was just a great lady. Everyone loved her in New Rochelle. Everyone was so proud of her and her husband as being New Rochelle residents. Uh, now they're united in heaven, uh, and I'm sure they're putting on some great productions up in heaven. Thank you. We have uh, Mr. Jenkins, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, so all legislators, when, uh, thank you. Um, and I certainly would like to join uh, Legislator Shimsky and Williams as well on um, Bill Blank, and certainly Mr. Testa as well um, with Mr. McNair, and I'm sure there may be others as well. Um, I stand up in the call of the districts um, to, to just bring to everyone's attention. I know we heard comment in the um, citizens to be heard portion um, with the modifications that are going on in, in Playland. And since I have a specific separate action that is going on, I wanted to bring legislators up to date that, um, that we're working through some scenarios and, and we'll see, but right now the contract is not canceled and I know that, that um, the county attorney's office has been in contact with my attorney, Evan Inlaw, on this particular item and hopefully that will be done and that will be a stipulation that would move forward. Um, that if the contract is indeed canceled, then that action may end. So we'll see how that works. The second item is that to report to the members of the board, um, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, for helping to steer this through with the, um, the COBA legislation with the, um, the disability payments for those officers injured. Um, I just wanted to report back to the board that um, it was adopted both by the state legislator, the assembly, and the Senate, and um, it was sitting on the governor's desk earlier today, but my understanding was that um, he was going to sign it. So um, I wanted to say thank you to all the legislators that worked through that um, together to get that done in such an expeditious fashion, specifically at the end of the time. And the vice chairman understands how uh, critical that, that timing is and, and thank everyone for their assistance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Excellent. Uh, legislators, uh, Mr. Williams. 
I'd like to join uh, on James McNair also. Perhaps we'd all like to yeah. join yeah. on Mr. McNair's family. Mr. Tester? Just to clarify who James McNair was, for those who might not know him by his birth name, uh, Uncle Jimmy Mack, he was the comedian from Peekskill who uh, was the sole uh, person lost in, in the accident on the New Jersey Turnpike with um, the other comedians. And um, very big community person, someone I knew well and worked with and uh, sparred with at times, uh, joking back and forth. But I, as I said, at his uh, memorial service, I was always very careful because he was always the last to speak and he could be ruthless. So <laughs> I was always kind uh, right before I knew he was going last because I knew he was going to get me good at some point or another. But we did uh, a lot of work together through various organizations in the uh, city of Peekskill. So b very big loss for not only the city of Peekskill, but for the county. Thank you, sir. Uh, we've been joined uh, by uh, Mr. Lesnick, uh, the former um, council president in Yonkers. Uh, any uh, other comments or additions to a memorial resolution? Otherwise, let's stand in a moment of silence to uh, remember those on our memorial resolution. This time, accept a motion to adjourn. Before you. Yes, I move that we adjourn to reconvene at our regularly scheduled meeting, which is July 14th, 2014, at 7 p.m. Uh, Majority Leader Borgia? Yes. Minority Leader Testa? Yes. Mr. Mezzano? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Okay. You're adjourned. Wow. We didn't pay the bills. That was